Hello, friends. It's Chop. <laughs> yeah, so he's trying to ride. Uh, he's trying to ride the little guy, uh-huh. and uh, the guy keeps throwing him off. And Nick Nolte says, "You know, how come you can't ride this little thing? Your ancestors rode dinosaurs." And the Mandalorian's like, "Okay, I'm gonna give one more shot." And he gets up. He walks up to the to the to the monster, uh-huh. and uh, he just gets on his back and he can ride it. And then that's how he overcomes his inability to ride that little guy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, Nick Nolte leads him to the the base where mm-hmm. uh, all the all the uh, bad guys are, and you know that's you know here here you go you know here's here's the uh, place where you're gonna get. Your your bounty, you uh-huh. get the, the the wanted guy, yeah, and uh, so then he goes there, but there's another bounty hunter there, and it's a robot, and it's an IG robot, <sighs> and they have to shoot all the bad guys together, and which they do, they accomplish this task, and then they go inside uh, the building, mm-hmm. and they find uh, who the bounty is, and it's it's a, a baby Yoda. <sighs> The way everybody has fucking fallen for this goddamn puppet is like, you are just the biggest rubes in the universe. Do you not know? Do you, how do you not like one look at Baby Yoda and imagine the board meeting at Disney like 16 months ago where they hired McKinsey Consultant to come in and while well, Solo was kind of, a bu- kind of a bust, people had mixed reactions to The Last Jedi. We don't know about all these new, new uh, things. We, we really need to have a winner coming out of the gate, especially with the next big one coming out at the end of the year what do we do with this show to make it stand out and get people's attention and some fucking mayor pete zombie ghoul unveils a, a, an easel with a picture of the baby yoda on it and he goes it's yoda but a baby and everyone just goes oh my god they just spontaneously stand and start clapping for him it's like the james cameron pitch for aliens mm-hmm. uh where he just writes alien and then puts an s with a dollar sign through it yes he writes yoda on the whiteboard and then just puts Baby. baby except he turns the b into the bitcoin if you put symbol two li- <laughs> if you put two lines through a y you can make it a yen symbol sure but he like, turns every every letter everything into, into a different, different, uh, <laughs> different monetary symbol currency but no your marks your rubes your absolute fucking rubes and by the way i watched this episode with uh virgil because i had known that nick nolte was supposed to be in it and then i watched it and i'm like where's nick nolte and i realized that he's the voice of some disgusting pig man <laughs> and it really makes me think about like alec guinness was really embarrassed by his by his in being involved in Star Trek, Star Wars, he thought it was juvenile. When people, when kids came up and said that they loved it, in it, he was embarrassed. How much more embarrassing would it be if he had been the voice of a pig man? And me- meanwhile, we have screen legend Nick Nolte just being like, "Yeah, hell, oh, fine, I'll be the pig man, goddamn. <laughs> oh, hell, I don't care what's the matter. I just, oh, I'm gonna go walk into the Pacific wearing my pants again. I oh, hell, I don't." Here, god damn it i'm be the goddamn pig man just send me the god send the goddamn check to the goddamn bar i don't care i don't see what's so bad about baby yoda I just, it's so transparently it's, manipulative it's mysterious it's and mysterious. imagine if you were a bounty hunter <laughs> and the bounty you had to collect was it was a baby you'd be you'd be you know morally torn by this uh, by the way apparently he's 50 years old but a baby because, uh, you know, uh, Yoda was 900 when he died. So clearly his species ages very slowly. The idea that you would be a helpless baby for 50 years, at least probably 100 given how small he is. How would that evolutionarily work? You would, I mean, my God, like fucking uh, the sea, sh- sea turtles barely make it from the fucking hatch nest to the sea without getting eaten by uh, sea fowl. How the hell is being a helpless little baby for a hundred years supposed to work? Yeah, and also, you know, it 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 does. It's not a proportional thing. Parrots live longer than we do, and they're basically an adult after like a year. Yeah, ridiculous. But still, I mean, come on, how can you hate the little guy? He's <laughs> so crazy, so mysterious, so and he's just, in all the memes now. <laughs> just come on, people! Like, how how am I supposed to have any hope that these that this public could be roused from their stupor to you know seize control of their destiny what would you and not just allow themselves to be baked alive in a microwave if they're going ooh, baby yoda what would you prefer matt a new thing yes you know, we about all that we've tried the new things that's, that's we've true. tried new things they're not, they're not working out that is, honestly that kind of is the rejoinder to everyone whining about retreads and stuff yeah everything new is terrible too everything Might as well just, just make 
incremental changes to the things that we're familiar with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can still get high off, you know, that, that dopamine hit of, of just a little bit of nostalgia and a little bit of novelty. And uh, turning your car on in the garage. That's the greatest <laughs> high of all, kids. Parody. Joke. Don't do that. Well, what do you say? Should we start the show? Let's pop open the hood in the Belt Lake garage. <laughs> Going under the hood in the bat right garage, gonna take a look at the politics. What's going on in the Beltway Garage? Has Kamala Harris dropped out? Welcome to Under the Hood at the Beltway Garage, where we check the oil filters of democracy and sip the windshield wiper fluid of public opinion. <laughs> I'm Virgil Texas. With me, as always, local favorite Matt Chrisman. Hey, hey. Before we get to the real candidates, first off, can we get some taps going for the candidates we've lost in recent so months? So hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Bill Bunglio bungled his way out of the race back in September, joining Rudy Giuliani, John Lindsay, and George McClellan Jr. in the annals of Big Apple mayors who ran for president and ate shit. By the way, when I was out of town, I listened to the episode, and you fucking tried to correct me in a show I wasn't on, which is bad, bad pool in my opinion, because some pedant nerd said, I actually, uh, one of the mayors in New York became vice president or something. That was in the 19th century before there was a combined mayor of New York. Brooklyn wasn't part of the city yet until 1898, I believe. I'm not counting any flip, anybody from before that because that wasn't the same city. Once again, this long-running controversy, which could probably be very easily resolved by reviewing a list of mayors of New York. I, I'll, re- I'll fucking review a list of your goddamn mayors. The, mayor, the mayor, first mayor of New York is Seth Lowe, okay? Nobody before that counts as a mayor of New York. Shut the fuck up. Going back, uh, let's get the taps going again. The, ba- the, the B- Buttigieg moment, like a lot of these moments, is going to end. I mean, he, he is, it's very shallow, and it's, it's very bit, much based on just sort of uh, especially uh, older Repub- Democratic voters getting that, uh, that, Dem- that Obama Q-zone tingle. But then there's the inevitable re- response and him fucking up and stuff. I mean, he will probably fall down, but those people aren't going to want to go to anyone who they who doesn't give them that and Beto could have been waiting in the wings problem was for all these guys you can't hang around if you don't have money Beto raised 6.1 million dollars on his first day in the race but he had basically run out of money by October Mm -hmm. and would have been forced to triage his campaign like Kamala Harris has so you know Harris made that choice and said no I'm gonna stick it out and maybe I'll be the beneficiary of some totally random surge uh whereas Beto said no I'm gonna go home with my dog wait a minute uh do it again. Say Beto Rock dropped out. Beto Rock dropped out. Dan in it. Dan in it. Say it ain't so. <laughs> uh, again, I, I, I think he should have stuck it out because at some point, you know, it's got to be someone. You're just we're just going down the list at this point. OK, who gets the surge now? Who gets the surge now? Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, is that that that's a, that's a weak that bump is a very it's a sugar rush. It's not going to be sustainable. You know, it depends when it hits. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. I uh, I just I, I I don't have any respect for the candidates who quit. They're, oh, no, they're they are cowards. They're I think if you start running, if you run out of money, you have 10 bucks in the bank. Doesn't matter. Just keep doing it. They're still going to invite you to like the, the Iowa County fairs and shit. So you still have somewhere to be and probably a hot meal. See, that's the point. It's like Joe Seastack's still in the race. The motherfucker has zero dollars. He has a negative <laughs> campaign chest, but he's just driving around at a Honda Civic in New Hampshire. You could do that. If you're Beto O'Rourke, you can just say, I'm out of money, but I'm not out of it. And just hang up, show up weirdly and awkwardly at debates and stuff. At least uh, when if Beto O'Rourke hopped in his hatchback and showed up at things, people would say, hey, it's Beto O'Rourke. As opposed to when Joe Seastack does, they're like, who? <laughs> what is this? I don't know who's been following this. Erratic, but like, what is this? What is this? So for, the, for the past month or so, and, and uh, the Admiral's campaign uh, pitched us on this uh, about joining him. He has pledged to walk the length of New Hampshire. And he's been posting pictures from his campaign event where he's just in the woods alone. 
you know, uh, just like, just like, you know, wearing like this old jacket, this old, like the old leather jacket, just like, just a perfect, just drifter, yeah. you know, just, 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 a, a, a he's the Kasich of this race. Sword. He, not even a Kasich. I, I picture him more like a Ronin <laughs> and you know, he's, he's just like, you know, uh, uh, like emerging from the woods and, you know, uh, finding like small backwoods towns in New Hampshire where there's, uh, I don't know, some kind of like cruel local landlord. Right. Maybe like the, everyone. the 70s TV version of the Incredible Hulk. Yes. Or uh, Kung Fu, the A-Team. Like the model is very well established. Joe Seastack shows up at a young widowed farm woman's house. She, he, she gives him a nice slice of pie and some well water and then tells him about the evil uh, agribusiness trying to move in on her land. And then he has to karate chop and tear the neck out of a bunch of thugs. He calls the local uh, carrier attack group in to, uh, yeah. you know, have an F-18 strike on. Yeah, could yeah. call him the admiral. He's like, that's a perfect pitch. The admiral. He's fighting a bunch of dudes on the sh- on the shore of a la- of a river in New Hampshire, pulls pulling necks out and stuff. And then like a bunch of technicals filled with uh, military contractors come in and then he just whistles. And then a fucking uh, aircraft carrier just pulls around the corner of the and just of the river just right there of, you know charles creek new hampshire yes the aircraft carrier pulls up in oh it's a perfect story and he's, he's, out the, he's uh new england uh aquatic geography knowledge i have there. no idea if that's a real quick oh, but that was. sounds like a, a place yeah, that sure. would exist in new hampshire just a man with a just a, a long long backstory but he doesn't really want to talk about it yeah. still all all that he has is uh his admiral pin <laughs> and uh the bracelet his daughter made him. I, w- I would say to CSEC, why stop at New Hampshire? Walk across the entire United States. Terry Fox did it in Canada, and he is the national icon. Now. Uh, he, actually, love that yeah, he actually didn't. He didn't do it? No, he died. Right, but he is still an icon, and people love him. Yeah, but I mean, so you're saying, he's saying he didn't finish. He got close. God he bless got, him. He got close. No, nobody contact us to get mad about this. We're all big uh, supporters of Terry Fox. <laughs> yeah, we all respect Terry Fox and all Canadian traditions. Uh, including your oil sands. Yeah, I love those. Oh, God. By the way, the soft the soft uh, pulp timber. Ooh, we love that. We love that stuff. But, We're going to be coming for it pretty soon. <laughs> but back to Beto, I mean, that's 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 the way you do it. You don't need a big fancy staff yeah. or I mean, five-star hotel. And the thing is, that was his original pitch as a candidate. He was going to just drive in a pickup truck and, like, stand on the table at a fucking diner. He was born to be in it. He was born to drive around with his, with his fucking dog. And, like, how uh, do you, at that point, when you run out of money and it's not working, how the hell do you just go back to Texas, especially when you have no plan? Like, he's not running against Cornyn. He has no real plan. Why do that instead of saying, fuck it, I'm going to go back to my indie roots and I'm going to do a DIY campaign, me and a truck and a dog, showing up at small, uh, uh, all-ages venues across Iowa, New Hampshire. <laughs> showing up at straight-edge venues throughout, <laughs> throughout the country. Uh well you know why you know why it's because he's a quitter he's been a quitter he his a whole quitter. life yes, quit his band quit you know, going to qu- you know, left, came to New York quit classic guy moves to New, New York, York you know lives in a fucking loft with like twenty five other filthy guys yep. in a quit, shitty quit band the house. and like, just quit that move back home to get like a dad at his uh, uh, job at his dad's fucking paperwork factory mm-hmm. quit the house uh yeah no he's a big quitter which is what makes him the I- iconic exer the the ur exer and the sad thing is you know he pivoted from being the uh. I don't know, the inspirational tall guy who stands on tables to after the uh, white supremacist shooting in El Paso to being the gun guy who he was, he was the one who decided I'm going to activate the Democratic base by being the one guy who say, no, we are coming for your guns. We're coming for your fucking guns. We're going to show up door to door fucking uh, Schwarzenegger uh, in in uh, Schwarzenegger and sabotage, breaching your door, stealing all of your guns. And it didn't go anywhere. I mean, I understand you know, it made campaign sense because if you become the mass shooting guy, oh, there's, a, there's, there's, a there's one, always one. Yeah, there's so it's one just free media. Yeah, every time there's a mass shooting, you'll probably get a couple pieces. It's, bumps. you know, the ambulance chaser strategy. I mean, but it went nowhere. Didn't probably, resonate with anyone. Also, maybe one part of the reasons it didn't go anywhere is because he got unlucky in that there was not a huge mass shooting after he became. Because imagine if there had been a paddock level mass shooting two weeks after he rebranded. He might still be in it. He might have gotten all of those Mayor Pete uh, uh, poll numbers. Honestly, and I, I, I think it was a bad pivot, ultimately. It made sense. I understand the logic behind it, but, you know, history shows that it was but an his incorrect decision- thing to do. The right pivot would to be to, be to double down on being, uh, a, you know, uh, uh, an airhead Gen X shithead. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, just like a total bimbo candidate, because his, his problem is he, you know, he's always been the bimbo candidate, but he 
tried to be taken seriously, and like nobody was buying it. And it really do you remember sh- a single word he said at the debates? Oh, no, no. no, nothing. Uh, or any, ever anywhere in any case. Like we need to rise above our petty differences. 